The Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine, presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Did you know that more women served Kraft's Parquet Margarine last year than any other brand? That's a fact. And here's why. Parquet is the margarine that looks wonderful, tastes wonderful, and spreads smoothly even when ice cold. This year, the Kraft folks want to make even more friends for Parquet. I'll tell you later how you can order glamorous Powers Model 60-gauge nylon stockings at less than half price every time you buy Kraft's delicious Parquet Margarine. By the light of the silvery moon, I want to soar to my honey of grown love Well, the lights above Floyd's Barbershop are burning brightly tonight, and passers-by can hear the not-too-melodious strains of familiar songs as sung by the great Gildersleeve and his cronies, the Jolly Boys. We'll be cuddling soon There's Judge Hooker to lend dignity. Barbara Floyd Munson, who lends the room. Chief of Police Gates, to preserve law and order. And our friendly neighborhood druggist, Mr. Peavy. We'll bring love dreams. We'll be cuddling soon. By the light of the the silvery, silvery moon. Yeah, great finish, Chief. Thank you, Commissioner. Yeah, the chief got a voice as clear as a bell. A diving bell. <laughs> Now, Floyd. I'm in good voice tonight myself. Don't you think so, Peavy? Then let's not start an argument. <laughs> uh, look, fellas, why don't we get on with the meeting? Somebody may have some business to take up. Yeah, let's get the dull stuff over with. Somebody call us to order. Well, who's president? Peavy's president. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. What an organization. Well, the meeting's called to order. Who has some business? Not I. Not me. Me neither. Good. Let's sing another song. Peavy, you didn't ask me. All right. Any business, Mr. Gildersleeve? No. I just wanted to be asked. Well, I want to play something. I got to keep my fingers warm. Floyd, you're hitting the wrong notes. Okay. For the next number, I'll take off my gloves. <laughs> Why don't we sing another song? You know, something with a good bass. There is a tavern in the town, in the town. Phoebe, we don't sing that one well. I do. <laughs> Look, fellows, let's stick to something safe. We better shut up, then. I don't agree. I think we do rather well with Sweet Sixteen. Great. Give us an introduction, Floyd. Okay. He plays better with his mittens on. Okay, let's go. I love you as I never loved before. Since first I met you on the mirror of Come to me. Yes, we're beginning to warm up. Well, I'm sorry, fellas, but I'll have to go now. Oh, yeah? Going to bed at 9 o'clock, Commissioner? Don't be naive, Chief. The Commission must have a date. On Jolly Boys Night, Gilda? 
Well, I did promise to pick up Irene at school at 9.30. She had a teacher's meeting. Commissioner, you're breaking up one of the best meetings we've had. Uh, I'm sorry, Chief. That's why I didn't mention it earlier. I didn't want to dampen your spirits. Oh, don't worry. We'll live. Oh, my, yeah. Well, when I go, it breaks up the singing. Because you don't have anyone who can sing lead. Who can't sing lead? The judge. If you're going to sing lead, do me a favor. Oh? Don't start until I get at least two blocks away. Yeah, <laughs> Good night, fellows. Down, Leroy. I heard him stirring around up there. I didn't know. He had such a big night last night. A jolly boys meeting and a date with Miss Henshaw. That's right. A double header. Uncle likes to sing so well. I'm surprised he'd leave the meeting to go out with a girl. A lot of thrushes like to go out with wrens, Leroy. <laughs> well, I hope I can resist women better than Uncle when I grow up. Good morning. Hi, Uncle. Morning, Mr. Gillsleeve. I'll fix your breakfast while you look at the paper. Oh, yeah, thank you, Bertie. Well, what's in the news this morning, my boy? I haven't had time to look at the paper. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be much going on. Say, here's a picture of the Jolly Boys. Yeah? You got your picture in the paper? Well, not mine. But all the other members are in the picture. No kidding. You got left out, huh? Quiet, Leroy. I want to see what's going on here. Here's your copy, Mr. Gillsleeve. Now, give it to him quick. He needs it. Why, this was taken after I left the meeting last night. It says, roving reporter catches nightingales roosting over barbershop. Oh, it's too bad you didn't get your picture in the paper, Mr. Gillsleeve. You see, Unc, that's what you get for going with girls. Oh. Let me see what else the article says. This group of business and professional men keep barbershop singing alive. My, my, don't they all look natural? You know, personally, I don't think it's good of any of them. Look, it didn't even mention my name. Burned up, huh? Yeah, of course not, Leroy. But if they were going to have their picture taken, they could have suggested that I stay. Did you suggest taking them on your date? Certainly not. Yeah, I know. They probably got sore because I left and practically broke up the meeting. The judge doesn't look very sore. Look at him smile for the camera. Yeah, grinning like an old crocodile. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gilsley, you shouldn't say that about your friends. They're no friends of mine. But, Unc, you're fellow jolly boys. Who's jolly? I'm surprised that the Jolly Boys would have their picture taken without me. Well, I just won't let them know I've seen it. And I dare any of them to bring it up. Hey, come here. Oop, there's Floyd. He's got the paper in his hand. Yeah, I'll pretend I don't hear him. Hey, come here. <laughs> Loud barber. Hey, forehead! <laughs> Watch it, Floyd. Come on in the shop. I want you to see a prominent VIP. Well, I haven't much time, Floyd. Oh, I guess you've seen the morning paper. What makes you think I've seen the morning paper? Because you got a chip on your shoulder big enough to shingle the city hall. I don't know where you get that idea. Us jolly boys got our picture in the paper. That's the worst picture I ever saw. <laughs> I thought you hadn't seen the paper. Yeah, well... You know what my wife, Lovey, said? She said, Floydy, you look just like a fat Rudy Valley. <laughs> <laughs> yes... Floyd, why wasn't I told about this? Well, it all happened after you run out on us last night, Commish. Oh? Yeah, it seems this reporter was passing, heard us singing, and got curious. He come upstairs, took a look, and snapped our picture. Oh, so that's how it happened. Yeah, look. Look at our names here in big type. It says from left to right. Yeah, Floyd... I know. Floyd, you have a real juvenile attitude about this whole thing. What do you mean? Yeah, I suppose you'll have that picture framed and hung over your mirror. How'd you know? It... This is the silliest thing I ever heard of. A bunch of grown men giggling in front of a camera like schoolgirls. Why, Commish, I didn't know this was really bothering you. It isn't, Floyd. See, I was only kidding when I called you a sorehead. But you really are a sorehead. <laughs> Floyd! Oh, 
Not that my vanity's hurt. Just a haphazard way to run an organization, that's all. It was Peavy's fault. He's president. You shouldn't have let them take pictures without all the members being present. You know, I'll just step in and see what he has to say for himself. Hello, Peavy. Ah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you? Don't act innocent, Peavy. How's oh, yeah? that? You could have gotten in touch with me last night for the picture. You knew where I was. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I didn't think you'd appreciate a call last night. Why not? When something important like this comes up. Mr. Gildersleeve, if you'd been sitting on the couch holding hands with your girl, and I called on the phone and said, drop what you're doing and rush down here. Peavy, I wasn't holding hands. Yeah, that's your fault, Peavy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. It isn't that I care about having my picture taken with the rest of you. <laughs> but it's a heck of a way to run a railroad. We didn't ask for this picture. Yeah, oh, yes. Floyd tried to tell me the man heard you singing and just came up. Well, I guess he just couldn't resist. At the time, I was singing. There is a tavern in the town. Oh. <laughs> Let's forget about the darn picture. I don't want to hear any more about it. Hello, fella. Oh, hello, Chief. Hello, Chief. Phoebe, isn't this a peachy picture? I think so. What a vain policeman. Why, this morning I was talking to the jail photographer. Jail photographer. And he says if we get the negative, he'll print up some pictures suitable for framing. You don't say. <laughs> yes, he says he's tired of photographing fellas with numbers on them anyway. Uh, uh, uh. Well, I've been thinking, Chief. As president of the club, I might send a picture to the Society for the Preservation of Barbershop Quartet Singing in America. That's a good idea. Are you going to send them that picture? Why not, Mr. Gillespie? Well, if you want to send them a picture without the lead singer, go ahead. Yeah. Over, Commissioner. Well, look at it this way. A quartet consists of four men. If you were in the picture, you'd make five. Yeah, that's part of the whole quartet. Oh. <laughs> so now I spoil things for the Jolly Boys. I didn't say that. Well, you said there could only be four in a quartet. That leaves me out. Well, yeah. And since you're president, Peavy, I assume you reflect the feelings of the club. Are you sore about something, Commissioner? No, I'm not sore. I don't have to be in your picture. I don't even have to be in your club. You mean you're getting out? Well, yes. If this is the way you're going to run things, I resign. Oh. Now, Chief, stop begging me to stay. He isn't breaking you to stay. He just said it all. Well, Peavy, what do you say? Yeah, fiddlestick. That does it. I resign. The great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. There's a new trend in nylon stockings that millions of women are discovering. They're finding that 60-gauge nylons are a better buy than 51-gauge because they're more snag-resistant and longer-wearing. That's the reason Parquet Margarine has changed the remarkable offer being made on Powers Model Nylon. Last year, you could order 51-gauge nylons at a big saving. But now you can get glamorous 60-gauge Powers Model Nylons at less than half price. You'd expect to pay at least $1.65 for luxurious, long-wearing nylons like these. But now you could order them for only 75 cents a pair when you buy delicious parquet margarine. They're guaranteed first quality, and you know they're full-fashioned because they were styled by John Robert Powers for his internationally famous model. Every pair wears the seal of approval of the United States Testing Company. Full instructions for ordering your Powers Model 60-gauge nylons at less than half price are printed in every package of Parquet. You have a choice of six sizes, two of the season's smartest shades, and two seam styles. Order as many as you like. Just include 75 cents for each pair, along with the yellow end flap from a Parquet package. This is the easiest way in the world to have the loveliest nylons you've ever owned. Tomorrow, be sure to buy the delicious margarine made by Kraft Parquet Margarine. Well, after Miss 
Gillsleeve blew up and resigned from the Jolly Boys Club. He moped around home a couple of days waiting for somebody to call him and talk him into reconsidering. Of course, he tried not to let on that it bothered him, but Bertie can read him like a book. Bertie? Yes, Mr. Gillsleeve? Did anyone phone me while I was out in the backyard? No, sir. None of your friends called. It, well, I wasn't expecting a call from them. Besides, I don't have any friends. <laughs> you got friends. They just ain't talking to you. Hi. Hello, Leroy. Be my boy. You haven't taken any phone calls from me and forgotten to tell me, have you? No. Who's going to call you? I think he wants the Johnny Boys to call. B- Bertie, I've said I don't want to talk to them. Yes, sir. He wants somebody he don't want to talk to to call him so he can tell him he don't want to talk to him, which he won't, because he does want to talk to him. <laughs> Bertie thinks I have regrets about resigning from the Jolly Boys. You don't, huh? Not one. What would you say if one of them came to the house? Well, I just pretend I wasn't home. You want me to tell that to the judge? What's that? Here he comes up the walk. Good old Horace is coming to see me. But, Aunt, you said... I don't have anything against Judge Hooker. It's just the Jolly Boys in general. Ah, did it! You, never mind, Bertie. <laughs> Leroy. Yeah? You better go to the door. Okay. And tell him you're not home? No, no. We can't be rude to the judge. You go to the door and tell the judge if he insists on seeing me, I'm in my study. What a character. <laughs> Hello, Leroy. Hi, Judge. Come in. I'm waiting for you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. I was hoping I'd find him home. Oh, yeah. He's in his study. Thank you, Leroy. You'll have to do some tall talking to make me change my mind. Hello, Gildy. Yo, it's you, Judge. I didn't expect to see you. Sit down and tell me what's on your mind. I came over to borrow your magnifying glass. Is that all you came for? What do you think? Well... Why do you need a magnifying glass? Since you foolishly resigned from the Jolly Boys, I think I should examine your head. (laughs) Now, Judge, I just don't want to belong to an organization that isn't properly run. I have nothing against Peavy personally, but he's not presidential timber. He didn't even remember he was president. Well, we seldom elect officers because there isn't much for them to do. One thing a president should do is hold the organization together. Yes, but Gildy... You didn't have to accept my resignation, Horace. Gildy, the real reason I came over is to ask you to reconsider. You well... If you're so unhappy with the present officers, I'll propose that we hold an election immediately. No, Judge, I don't want to offend Pete. Oh, he doesn't care. In fact, he told me the other day that uh, he had a good notion to resign himself. Of course, I'd rather come back than see the club fall to pieces. That's the spirit. Yeah, I'm a man who feels his responsibilities keenly, you know. The club has meant a great deal to all of us, Gilda. I know it has filled the void in my own empty life. What greater joy does life hold than the camaraderie of men joining together in good fellowship and lifting their voices in song? Judge, don't cry. I'll come back. case of my going back to them, Leroy. They came to me. In fact, just to get me back in, they're going to have an election of officers. Yeah? The judge didn't come right out and say so. But I could see he feels the need of a strong hand at the helm. Yours? Well, I'll admit, when I was president, I kept things humming. Yeah, maybe that's why they didn't re-elect you. No, that wasn't it. The presidency sort of rotates. Went from me to Judge Hooker... To me, to Peavy, and now it's my turn again. You think you got it cinched, huh? Well, like any campaigner, I'll do what I can to get elected. Bertie! Yes, sir? There's quite a possibility I'll be nominated for the presidency of the Jolly Boys. Well, I thought you was out. Well, they want me in again. Oh, that's nice. Of course, if I go back, I'm going to see if the club is operated differently. Yes. Hey, Bertie, 
Would you mind preparing a little midnight snack for the boys election night? No, sir. <laughs> Is this your way of stuffing the ballot box, Mr. Gilfleet? <laughs> no, Bertie, that's not the idea. I'm only doing this to prove that I bear no malice. Yeah. You might have ham and cheese sandwiches and potato salad and fix a lot of deviled eggs. Yes. Yeah. You're not stuffing the ballot box. You're just stuffing the Jolly Boys. <laughs> Petey doesn't want to be president, so why shouldn't I serve again? And if I do decide to run for some political office this fall, it won't hurt to have it on the record. The city water commissioner, president of a club, prominent in the PTA. <laughs> yeah, I'll go in and patch fences with Petey. Hello, Petey. Ah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, I suppose you know Judge Hooker came by and persuaded me to withdraw my resignation from the club. Well, I'm glad you reconsidered, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I'm glad you're glad. I guess you also know there's going to be an election of officers. Excuse me. Well, that brings up a point. As long as you're not interested in being president, I thought I'd run. Well, it's about your turn anyway, isn't it? You run every other time. (laughs) (laughs) No, Phoebe. I'm just joshing, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'll vote for you. Oh, fine. (laughs) But what about the others? What do you mean, the others? Well, when you blew up in my face, Floyd and the chief thought you were a little out of line. Gee, if they feel that way, they can swing the election. And that's what I say. Well, all we have to do is show there's no ill will between us. Well, certainly none on my part, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're a very good customer. You care to buy a box of cigars and pass them around before election? <laughs> well, I'm already furnishing the dinner. Yeah, I mean... My, my. Peavy, I'll admit I wouldn't mind being president again. Well, like I say, I'm going for you. Yeah, thanks, Peavy. Now, I have an idea. If I nominate you and you nominate me, that'll prove to Floyd and the chief that we've buried the hatchet. No, that's Mr. Gildersleeve. The minute we open the meeting, I'll nominate you. No, no, let me nominate you first. That'll prove to everyone that I hold no grudge. Well, yes. And then when we cast our secret ballots, they'll know I'm voting for you. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I wonder what's keeping Gildy. I thought he'd be the first one here. Maybe he threw us over for a girl again. Now, Floyd, just because we're all happily married men... Oh, now, don't speak for all of us, Chief. <laughs> What's this, Peavy? The judge isn't married, but he's happy. Yep, I'm footloose and fancy free. <laughs> hey, here's a commit. Hello, fellow. Hi, hello, hello, Commissioner. Yeah. Well, now that we're all here, let's have a song. A gentleman, please. Before we start the singing, why don't we get the election out of the way? That's a good idea. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Before the election, let's have a cigar, fellas. Hey, he bought a whole box. Yep. I bought them for my good friend, Petey. <laughs> cigar, Chief? You know I don't smoke, Commissioner, but I'll take a couple to the jail from a trustee. You help yourself. You go ahead. Reach right in, Chief. Well, thanks. Floyd? They ain't loaded, are they? <laughs> Only with goodwill. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll put the box here in the piano where everybody can help himself. Ah, but... uh, you know, it's good to have you and your cigars back in the club, Commission. Yeah, thanks, Floyd. I'll have food up here for everybody in a few minutes. Yeah? yeah it's on me. <laughs> Nothing like a little snack after we vote. My, my. I'm happy to see there's no more rancor or hard feelings among the Jolly Boys. Why, of course not, Judge. Hey, listen. Somebody's coming upstairs. Yeah, that's Bertie with the food. Good evening, gentlemen. Well, hello, hello Bertie. Bertie. Just spread it out there on the table, buffet style, Bertie. Yes, sir. Have you been elected yet, Miss Pilkey? Shh, Bertie. Okay, okay. I'll spread that like you said. Mmm, something smells good. Yeah. What do you got there, Bertie? Oh, we got some ham, cheese, potato salad, and deviled eggs. Deviled eggs, old boy. Commissioner, this is a real treat. You did a noble thing providing this spread. Well, you'll have to thank Bertie, Chief. 
By George, everything's going great. I'm as good as elected. I wish my drugstore sandwiches looked like Bertie's. Oh, Mr. Teasen. Well, I know everybody's hungry, so why don't we get things underway? It's a good idea. I'm stopped. Peavy, why don't you call the meeting to order? You're still president. Very well, well. Are there any nominations for president? Well, I'd like to be the first to make a nomination. You would, Gilda? You bet. I'd like to nominate for president of the Jolly Boys, my good friend, Richard Q. Peavy. Hey, he's nominating the peeve. Isn't that nice? Gilda, that's a splendid gesture. <laughs> well, do I hear a second? You come on, fellas. There are other nominations to be made, you know. Well, Commission. If you want the peeves to be president again, I move we make it unanimous and eat. But... Aye. 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 Well, I'm afraid it's carried. Great. Let's eat. Come yeah, on. Yeah, get some left. Oh, my goodness. How did that happen? <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be back in 30 seconds. Tomorrow's the day to begin building your wardrobe of glamorous nylon stockings at less than half price. Just pick up Kraft's delicious parquet margarine when you're shopping. You'll find full instructions in every package for ordering a pair of Powers Model 60-gauge nylons for only 75 cents. Millions of women are cutting their hosiery budgets more than half this easy way. You can order a new pair of flattering, long-wearing nylons every time you buy... Parquet margarine. Hi, Unc. Well, good morning, Leroy. Congratulations. I guess you're president of the Jolly Boys this morning. Uh, no. no. They re-elected Mr. Peavy. What? You mean you didn't get it after furnishing all that food? Well, the presidency isn't the only important office, my boy. Oh, I get it. You're vice president. Uh, no. No? Treasurer? No. No? Secretary? Well, not that either. Oh, gosh, Yuck, what else is there? I'm in charge of refreshments. <laughs> Good night, folks. Played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Earl Ross, Arthur Q. Bryan, Lillian Randolph, Ken Christie, Jack Meekin, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Delicious cold cuts for luncheon or supper make a welcome change of pace from the hot meals you've been serving. Easy to fix, too. But here's a tip. Be sure there's delicious craft prepared mustard on the table. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. There are two kinds of craft mustard. Mild craft mustard, so smooth and delicately spiced. And craft mustard with snappy horseradish added to give it extra zip. Keep both kinds on hand for different tastes. Next time, get craft prepared mustard. Annually proclaimed by the President of the United States for the past 26 years, Brotherhood Week celebrates rededication of the principle of human brotherhood as expressed in the Declaration of Independence and the Golden Rule. This year, 10,000 communities are participating in the Brotherhood events. Help make brotherhood a living art. Believe it. Live it. Support it.